We've reached a point where it's near impossible for everyday people to keep up with the rising prices, especially gas. What is the reasoning for these prices being so high though? Typical free market supply and demand fluctuations, taxes, corporate greed, or every politician's favorite answer, Russia. Well, let's take a look at the details and find that out. But before we do, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with the world of trucking and let's get into it. Recently, the president, who has been around since we first started using gasoline, and the drama teacher turned political dramatizer, have been blaming the recent high cost of gas on the Russian president, with Biden even calling it, quote, Putin's price hike, and making the bold claim that the Russian leader is responsible for 70% of the increase in inflation. However, that statement is true and only true if you look at the rise in energy costs impacted the monthly rise of inflation, not the annual. So at best, this is an incompetent analysis of the situation, and at worst, it's deliberately gaslighting the population and making them believe that something terrible which has occurred in recently in Ukraine is retroactive and to blame for the steady rise of inflation over the last year or two. If you look at the consumer price index from last month and compare that with how the rising costs of energy have contributed to inflation as a whole, you'll see that prices rose 1.2% from February to March. The rise in energy and gas accounted for 69.1% of that increase, so seemingly Biden rounded up and also assumed that the price increase in energy was all of Russia's doing. However, is that really the case? Supply issues are definitely real, and I'll go over that later in this video, but very few people take into account the unprecedented fiscal policies that both Canada and America have implemented over the last two years. Both countries have been using money printing privileges as if it's a parent's credit card. In 2020, there was 4 trillion US dollars floating around the world. Today in 2022, there's 20 trillion US dollars floating around, meaning roughly 80% of all American money was conjured out of thin air during the pandemic, with Canada joining in on the bad habits, but of course, seeing as our economy is peanuts compared to America, so is our amount printed. So what happens when governments print money? Well, roundabout inflation occurs because all of a sudden consumers have increased purchasing power over the same amount of supply. So while we sit and talk about the prices of everything going up, the more accurate description would be the value of money is going down. Economists working at the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco found that the printing of money, which largely went towards stimulus checks, may be responsible for as much as three percentage points to the country's inflation rate. And when governments say that they want to keep overall inflation between 2 to 4% annually, you can see how one source of inflation eating up that entire headroom is, shall I say, not ideal. Speaking of bad policy, let's take a look at how much of the money you're hemorrhaging at the pump is not anything to do with natural market conditions, but rather government intervention in the markets. A good example of the extremes of bad policy is California, whose environmental rules require refiners to follow specific formulas designed to reduce air pollution when the temperature is high which as a result causes gasoline prices to differ from winter to summer. By the Western States Petroleum Association calculation, California's policies increased the price of gasoline by $1.27 per gallon at the end of January. Almost two thirds of that came by the state's excise tax, which is designed to increase year after year. Originally, excise taxes were meant to be concrete, hence why they say the amount of tax per gallon rather than your typical tax rate, aka percentage. But things may only get worse in the realm of gas taxes because as of 2016, 19 states, California being one of them, have rates that vary alongside changes in the price of fuel, the inflation rate, vehicle fuel economy, and other factors. So as the price goes up, so does the amount they tax you. Which is ridiculous because tax rates should be set depending on what is needed and what the citizens can afford. For instance, California is facing budget surpluses, and as a response to that, they've raised taxes and punished citizens. That's like if your job had a historic year of sales and they responded by issuing pay cuts. California has the highest tax rates in the country at 86 cents per gallon for gasoline and $1.24 for diesel. Keep in mind that factors in federal tax as well, but to put this into perspective, there's 15 states with gas taxes less than half of California's and 38 states with less than half of their diesel tax. The average tax per gallon of gas for America is 57 cents and 64 cents for diesel. In Canada, we get bent over just as bad, if not worse, and in Ontario, provincial gas tax alone sits at 14 cents per liter or 64 cents per gallon. In 2018, Doug Ford, the Premier of Ontario, actually campaigned on lowering the gas tax from 14 to 10 cents per liter, but has since reneged on that promise and has instead said he'll match whatever fuel tax deductions the federal government makes. And seeing as his pal Justine is a huge fan of raising taxes, he might as well have just said that now I'm in office, I don't really care what I promised. 
All things considered though, these aren't even the biggest factors as to why gas prices are so high. One of the main problems, if not the main problem, is what it always is, Wall Street. The Dallas Federal Reserve asked 100 executives of oil and gas companies why prices are so high. Roughly 5% said because of government regulations, 7 or 8% saying lack of financing, 10% saying environmental issues, and 60% saying because of investor pressure to maintain capital discipline, aka investment firms and corporations are making a lot of money and want to continue doing so. They're actually making the consumers and everyday people make up for their losses during COVID. Because what happened is these people spent roughly 10 years using cheap capital and spending hundreds of billions of dollars on drilling oil for domestic production, which in theory is great, but the problem is when COVID hit, oil prices plummeted and all of a sudden they stopped seeing profits. So at times like this, they are reaping the rewards of those prices and essentially double charging us this year because we weren't customers last year. Now, if you couldn't tell by my commentary on the government earlier in this video, typically I'm against government intervention in the market. However, pretty much the only time you can get me on board is when industries start functioning like monopolies and exploiting the people. Right now, all solutions being proposed by governments are things like cutting provincial or state gas taxes. Even Trudeau ended up not raising his precious carbon tax, which is as good as cutting taxes with him, seeing as they are never not rising. However, even after cutting out regional gas taxes, we're still way higher than we can afford to be. For instance, in Ontario, we are at $1.96 a litre, or $8.89 per gallon. Even if we cut out the provincial tax of 14 cents, we're still paying historically high prices at $1.82 per litre. Other proposed solutions have been sending out gas cards to all citizens like we did with stimulus checks and government assistance at the beginning of the pandemic, which leads me to the question, can we stop thinking printing money and handing it out to everyone doesn't create more issues than it solves? So if neither of these so-called solutions are actually solutions, well, what could we do? The only way is to flood the market with supply. Seeing as all Western leaders have taken moral crusades against Russian oil, foreign oil needs to be made up for from other countries like the highly moral choices of Saudi Arabia or Venezuela. We also need to start ramping up production at home, which doesn't even require new pipelines as we're under drilling right now. In fact, increasing supply is so important that if we don't, the decisions to lower prices by temporarily not charging taxes will in effect cause increased demand by causing people to rush to the pump and also stockpile for when the government starts taxing again, which will then just drive upward pressure on the price of gas and actually make Wall Street and oil companies even more money. Now, unfortunately, seeing as solutions to the gas prices are hardly even a public conversation because we're too busy talking about celebrity divorces and our leaders are too preoccupied fighting quote unquote misinformation and sending billions of tax dollars to other countries, I don't see any meaningful solution to this problem being implemented, but we'd love to hear what you think. Is there any way out of this? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time.